Football is a sport that's known globally, whether it's having a kickabout with mates, watching on the TV, or going to the matches. However, it can be expensive. So why is there so much money in football? Football has been around since the 15th century, but it became the game we know today on the 26th of October in 1863, when of course association football was formed. Since then, the likes of Pele, Beckenbauer, Lionel Messi, Cristiano Ronaldo have come into our hearts and memories. And even the Premier League has had its mix of legends and great players such as Michael, Alan Shearer, Gary Lineker and even Dennis Bergkamp. While matches are won and players retire, there is always one constant in every single season of football. The fans. The fans are always there for the club through thick and thin. Anywhere and anytime across the globe, there are always fans to rely on, especially considering the fact that they are the ones that are paying for the club. Football is expensive to support, let's face it. Fans will pay over hundreds of pounds to buy the shirts, the footballs, the boots, and we haven't even taken into account the match day products either. Then of course there are the season tickets. Take the Premier League for example. For the 2016-17 season, the cheapest season ticket is West Ham's at £289 and the London neighbours Arsenal? Fans have to spend over £1,000 to attend every home game. But what about the other leagues? Surprisingly, Barcelona, regarded as one of the biggest clubs in the world, charge just £113 per season and Porto only charge a measly £86 to see all their home games. So why are fans paying so much in the Premier League? One of the main reasons will be the lucrative TV deals that have been brought in by Sky and BT. Premier League TV rights for the 2016-19 season were signed for £5.136 billion pounds in early 2015. It's a 71% increase on the original number for 2013-2016. to 2016. That equates to £10.19 million for each Premier League game. And all this money being thrown in by Sky and BT and all the other clubs is going to bring in some massive transfers and massive wages. August 2016, Paul Pogba became the world record transfer at £89 million by Man United, with wages reported at £300,000 a week. The most expensive teenager, Anthony Martial, at £36 million for Man United. But where does all this money come from? The TV deals aren't the only main finances clubs can take in. So teams are having hundreds of millions pummeled into their accounts for every season and most of them are coming from foreign investment as well. In fact, in the Premier League, Man City's value for their owners are £20 billion, which is the highest value, all thanks to this man, Sheikh Mansour, who purchased the club in 2008. So why is the Premier League bringing so much money from investors? In a recent documentary for Vibro, David Conn was interviewed about this. He said after the money came in and the Premier League split off, most English owners cashed in by adding to stock markets and selling them. And as well, promotion to the Premier League you could win at least £120 million for one season just because of the new TV deal. And most, if not all, Premier League teams have big money investments. Everton recently took in major investment, namely from Farhad Mashiri. Mashiri now has bought 49.9% of the shares in Everton Football Club, making him the major shareholder. The fans believe this is good for Everton, for now and in the future, so I attended the fixture of Everton vs Sunderland, not only as a fan, but to find out what fans think of the money being used in football today. Being a member of a supporters club, but I, I am. Yeah. I mean, that helps. And we have a say on what our travel. Well, getting around the country is not easy. No. But to have, for home matches, I think we do okay. Value for money. Value for money. Yeah. You, and increasingly so with these, they've frozen the prices or lowered the price over the last three, four years. Our club is leading the way in that respect. I think when you compare Everton to other Premier League clubs, it's probably not too bad. But then when you compare it to clubs around Europe, it's probably very overpriced. I mean, you sort of like go to Germany and stuff like that, where mm. you can get a season ticket like 100 quid. The shirts are overpriced. I'd prefer it if it was how it used to be, where you'd have a home shirt one season, yeah. away shirt the next, and alternating. Mm. That was a lot more affordable. It should be at least 30, 35 yeah. maximum. Kits. I would stop every season. Really? I would. I think they became very close coming out with a good design this season by reversing the shirt with badges on either side and you could have reversed it. Therefore you'd have got two shirts, uh, two in, shirts one. in one. Um, I think they're doing a lot already to be honest, doing things like reducing the season ticket prices year on year. It's hard to know what else they can really do to be honest because yeah. it's selling out 
week on week now. I mean, it's sold out every game this season so far. So if it was a case of people couldn't afford to come and it was ridiculous prices, then there won't be people here. Also, uh, the merchandising, back in the 80s, you'd find Everton stuff everywhere, along with the Tottenham Arsenal Man U stuff. Now you can find the Arsenal Man U stuff, but not Everton. Yeah. Well, I think I follow the leagues around the world. Most leagues compared to ours, they're very poor. Italy now, the majority of their Serie A teams are in desperate, desperate states because the Premier League has become the world Hollywood of football. This country football has always been the big sport to follow. With these brand new owners and everything that people are getting, they allow you to buy the best from around the world. Everton aren't the greatest team, but we've got some fantastic footballers. Definitely. And that's because of the money. I think it's because of uh, sort of the globalisation of football and, and the media. Because people are watching it on, on, on Sky television and, and sort of satellite television. are actually putting the money into the uh, multimedia uh, televisions. Yeah. Probably the, the backup from Sky probably takes a lot of the things. When you yeah. look at when the money started to come in ridiculously, it's at the start of the Premier League, which is when Sky got involved, and then it's sold around the world. So it is now seen as a... It's entertainment rather than a sport, essentially. Mm. So. Rather a business. Yeah, exactly, yeah. Sky. Sky. Yeah. Uh, they've monopolised it and they're driving the ordinary fans away really. It's only because my circumstances have changed this year that yeah. I could afford to. Um, I've been supporting Everton since 85 and this is the first time I've been able to afford a season ticket. Um, I think it's probably given more money to the heights of clubs, which has yeah. sort of made that, trying to bridge that gap between them and us a little bit more difficult. Mm. Back in sort of like 70s, 80s, where you could get a team that could spend a little bit of money and go from 12th to winning a league. I know Leicester was a, a yeah. <laughs> one-off, but those sort of days are gone, I think, because of the money that's just involved. In Two different ways, actually. I think the Arabs have been very positive. They've built the area of East, if you go to East Manchester now compared to the way it was, but then when you look at the Chinese model, it's a toy. The first one was obviously Abramovich coming over and that just changed the whole thing completely. Um, everyone now is just looking for that quick win with a foreign owner essentially. Mm. Just someone to sort of bankroll it. You're not going to get in chairman here as money to put in that is going to make us compete. So mm. unless you've got that owner, you're not, you're not going to get anywhere really. I don't think it's affected us yet, but I think it's getting there. And they were talking about Wayne Rooney possibly being offered a million pound a week. Yeah. That's, that's extraordinary. That could drive players away. So now we've got the fans' views then, but what if we could get some ex-professionals? Toxteth TV, the home of Maiden Liverpool TV, is where shows such as The Everton Show are filmed and produced. But they also do a show called Across the Park featuring Derek Mountfield and David Fairclough. So I visited EBGB's where Across the Park is being filmed to garner their opinions on this topic. Okay, so I am here with Derek Mountfield and David Fairclough and just a quick little interview. Why do you think wages and transfer fees are so much higher than what they used to be? They choose the Premier League gets about five billion pound every three years off Sky TV. Um, the money's massive compared to what we played with in the 70s and 80s. The average wage is probably a a weekly wage is probably a year's wage and I was playing if not more. But the game's changed because the money's been pumped in from outside sources including the BTV companies. Mm. Yeah, the game has become much more commercialised and I mean we've seen this big change come about since Sky got involved in, in, in football around 1991. Um, wages have steadily gone up and, and obviously as agents have, have got in on the act and um, brought and maybe a little bit more of awareness to, to players that they can ask for for bigger uh, salaries and, uh, and and what have you, then um, you know it's gone uh, hand in hand, and, and then clubs obviously have, have tried to uh, capitalise on uh, on the money available in, in terms of asking for transfer fees. Definitely. Um, so why do you think so much investment then has been put into the leagues like Premier League? Well, I mean the the, the product has, has become um, well received around the world. It's well televised. Um, uh, it's all credit to the Premier League how they've marketed it. They, you know, they, they've made 
the, the, the most of the of the personalities that play in the league. They've made the, the most of the uh, the reputations of the football clubs, the likes of Manchester United, you know, Liverpool, Arsenal. Um, have all been sort of brought to to the to the fore, and, and uh, you know, with their tradition and, and, and success, I think it was um, you know that the. the uh, is we talk about to, to the marketing tool of using the uh, possibilities that, that, that they have and the fact that now that it's, it's watched by pretty much every country in the world now uh, shows you you know what a good job they've done of it. Mm. Definitely. It's what I mean, it's not just the, the Premiership, it's the Champions League. It used to be the European Cup where you had to be the, the win of your league to win it. Now the Champions League is worth billions of pounds a year as well. So it's all about the finance of the game now and, and people have seen that because the way football's gone, especially with the Premier League, other people have come on board and it is just one big money making tool. And unfortunately for, for me, my, my, my sense is that the players are getting an awful lot of money and, and, and the fans, I think, get a little bit of a, a short straw at times with the increase in ticket prices mm. and, and programmes and kits every year. So when the fans week in, week out, will go and support their team. Uh, and the players are taking an awful lot of money and, and the, the staff around the grounds uh, and agents especially and, and some of the money is going out of the game and my, my big worry is for all the money Sky put in if you're going to buy a player for £30 million from a say Afghanistan yeah. that £30 million goes out of the club out of the country and his wages are out of the country and nothing's coming back into the game my, my concern is that the lower levels when all this money is coming into the game it doesn't always get filtered down to a lower level especially the grassroots stuff because you're signing foreign players all that money then leaves our country and they don't really care about the little kids coming through in our leagues. The TV deal, £5.136 billion, pound, has benefited the clubs in the leagues and the chances of success, or is it just bridging out the gap? Well, it, it, it's obviously brought about profits, but where that profit goes, it, it certainly doesn't filter through to some of the areas that generally people would like it to see, as, as Derek mentioned. You know, grassroots football doesn't get a real sort of a share of, of that, you know, it, mm. as I said, it's a commercial world, so the money that's coming in largely is probably going out and, uh, you know, by, by way of dividends to to the owners and uh, the, the, the people who really are controlling the club. It's, it's, as Dave said, it's one of them, it's, there's a lot of money in the game now and a lot of money is leaving our country, I think, but, you know, it will never be readdressed because it's been there, it's been 26, 27 years in existence now, so unless there's a massive change around in the, in the culture of football, the money will still come on the game, the money will still leave our game and we'll still be looking at the grassroots pitch on a Sunday afternoon, mm. uh, two foot full of water and you look at some of the facilities abroad in Germany and Spain for example where they're playing on proper 3 4G pitches which is paid for through the football and we've, we've got to look after our kids because without the kids coming through we'll have more and more foreigners in our game in years to come and that money that the foreigners get will leave the game. How would you reckon the club are trying to convince fans to come to the games and not just sit at home and watch them on the chairs? How do you reckon they're bringing them into the stands? Well, every, every, every club has their own way of, of enticing uh, fans through the gates. When you look at some clubs and they're wholly enthusiastic about getting young people into the stadium and you look at others and you, you'll, you'll see very much a, uh, a small presence of, uh, of younger people. Uh, clearly. Younger people have to be encouraged to come and watch football the way that we were a long time ago. Um, it has to be affordable and then they have to be taken into consideration. Some people though see it only in a, in a short term uh, vision um, and they, they think it's about getting uh, fans through the doors, not thinking that perhaps where are they, they going to be in 10 years, 15 years time. You know, Affordability is, is a massive uh, consideration but it seems, uh, it seems to be missed by, by quite a number of clubs, uh, I think. Um, you can't afford to take the fans for granted because football without any fans is not, it ceases to become a spectacle. You know, if you, if you turn the TV on and, and look at a football match and, and the stadium's only half full, you know, you're not inclined to watch it as much as you would do uh, if, you, if you see the stadium absolutely sort of chock a block with people and creating an atmosphere, football without atmosphere. It, it isn't just a game to be watched on TV. You do have to have the atmosphere that goes with it, and that's what makes it sort of something worthwhile. Okay. Okay. Derek, David, thank you. Thank you very much. No problem. Thank you. But others were opposed when investors took over the clubs, 
Man United were taken over in 2005 by the Glazer family. However, fans believed that the club would go into debt, so soon after, the club FC United of Manchester was formed, funded from fan investment and donations. In a recent interview with VPro Documentary, the chairman Andy Walsh said that businesses are after our cash. We should be using our cash to protect our football clubs, not to line the pockets of big business. And fans across England are suffering from the hands of the club owner. Coventry City fans have to travel 48 minutes to Northampton for a home game. And Cardiff City had to revolt and protest against their Malaysian owner, who wanted to change the club colour from blue to red to bring in more business. Now many fans are arguing that these businessmen are ignoring the traditions and the history of their clubs. They're not wrong. Now let's take a trip to Germany. RB Leipzig were majorly invested and basically rebranded by Red Bull, hence the RB in the name. But it only took them seven seasons, seven seasons to get to the Bundesliga. They've become one of the most hated clubs in Germany because they ignore the traditions and the fans that are involved with the clubs. Sound familiar? They charge 800 euros for fans to be members of fan involvement with the club. Hundreds more than other clubs in the Bundesliga. And obviously fans are outraged. Some are saying that RB Leipzig was founded just to make more money. However, some believe that this is just modern day football coming into fruition. And why not start where the German FA was born to start this rise of commercial clubs in Germany? Now, a new financial superpower has been flexing out in the past few months. That superpower is of course China. Now China have invested in clubs such as AC Milan and West Brom, but they've also been able to put in ludicrous wages and transfer offers. China have done deals such as Oscar's £60 million and Carlos Tevez's £40 million transfers. And now the Chinese league football governing body has had to put spending caps on every transfer window for all clubs. And it just shows though, prime example, how popularity grows in football, where clubs will have to spend ludicrous amounts of money just to get in the big players. Well, for now, there's no money coming in, and unfortunately, that's the way football is. The wages are never reasonable, the players never play for the fans or the club. Less than a pound one. Why not?